welcome to Intake Talk Show. This is Bertha's Corner, and I am Bertha Freeman Barrett. Joining me today is Alicia Dixon, who is a counseling intern student. Also joining me is the one and only, the poet, Love Rain. Welcome, ladies. Hey. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited about this show today. So, Alicia, let's start with you. Why don't you give the viewers some background information on yourself? Yeah, of course. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Alicia Dixon. I am originally from the south side of Chicago. Um, I am in the U.S. Air National Guard. I have been in the military for 15 years now in this bubble of ours. I am currently in in my clinical mental health program. I'm in my last semester, well, one more step after this one. This semester will be over in a couple of weeks. I'm very excited for graduation in August. And I am a mother, I'm a student, uh, soon to be up and coming motivational speaker. And I'm just very excited to be here. Love it, love it, and congrats! You're almost there. I remember that. Almost done. <laughs> One more semester. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, Love Rain. Give the viewers some background information on yourself. All right. So, hello, everyone. My name is Taryn Love Rains. Um, I am a poet, a speaker, um, author, curator. Um, uh, one of my good friends says that I'm a curator of dopeness. So. <laughs> I think I like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm a poet. Um, I'm originally from Miami, Florida. I've been in Jacksonville a little over 15 years now. So might as well say I'm from Jacksonville. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to be here today and talk and chat and catch up and um, be able to provide some resources and some insight. Uh, to a, a community that I think that a lot of folks forget about sometimes yeah. when it comes to, to mental issues. So, yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. And I agree with your friend, dopeness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but many of you viewers, you don't know, Love Rain is like a daughter to me. I love her to life. And we met a long time ago in corporate America. And we don't see each other often, but trust me, when we do see each other, there is still love. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> still love. Okay. So, Love Rain, why don't you start us off? Give the viewers a taste. Let's oh. give them a poem. Start us off. <laughs> you know, and what's funny is I think that um, the poem that I'm going to start off with, I think, is, is fitting for the topic. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is a poem that is very, uh, it's, it's not super fresh. I think I wrote it in January, mm-hmm. uh, but it's it's probably the most vulnerable poem I've ever written. So nice. Yeah. So here it goes. Imagine living in a world where it's okay to say it's a blessing that you got pregnant from being raped. Imagine living in a society that gives more grace to a father who doesn't take care of his child or children than to a child who who loves differently than their peers. Where society's misguided fears are what drives the whole world to be against you, imagine being sexually assaulted over and over again. Imagine that assault coming from strangers, family, and friends. Imagine convincing yourself that the only way to change was to allow that to happen more. Imagine praying to just be alive, imagine praying to just not be alive no more. Imagine isolating yourself from your niece and nephew because if one of them becomes gay, it's your fault. Imagine believing that. Um, Imagine believing that that bull, imagine allowing that BS to seep so deep into your soul that you just don't know who you are anymore. Imagine living your life in what you truly feel is your purpose. Imagine bawling your eyes out in the parking lot of a venue. Imagine someone from the audience saying thank you for your words. Imagine feeling worthless and powerful. Imagine feeling happiness and sadness in a continuous stream of tears that for the past 10 years have been wiped away by the most beautiful chocolate munchkin munchkin princess in the world. Imagine not knowing your place in her life anymore. Imagine feeling helpless. Imagine your heart being held together by the last bit of hope you hold onto that one day 
you can finally be you. Imagine knowing that one day, you know that you will get there, but still feeling defeated. Imagine standing in front of a room full of people as if nothing is wrong. Imagine holding every bit of strength you have together to even be there. Imagine believing in love again. Imagine forgetting everything that ever hurt you. Imagine believing in you. Imagine, imagine finally loving yourself. Imagine trusting God. Imagine promising yourself to take it one day at a time. Imagine taking it one second if you have to. Imagine not really knowing what to do with all of this. Imagine feeling God in your fingertips with every stroke. Imagine feeling like the brunt of life's joke. Imagine closing your eyes and seeing heaven, wondering if it's any better up there or wherever it is. Imagine hurt becoming your best friend. Imagine praying to just not be hurt anymore. Imagine believing that you actually can. Imagine taking the necessary steps to heal. Imagine this poem being one of them. Oh, I love it. I love it. Marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yes. I love yes. That. yes. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Moving. Very moving. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of truth. A lot of truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, that was probably one of, one of the most vulnerable poems I've ever written. Uh, and it's all true experiences. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. So let's start here, ladies, because today our um, our conversation is focused on the LGBT community, mm -hmm. um, and both of you are um, both of you um, have a lot of information on that. So let me just start here because I um, did some research, and according to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, youth and adults within the LGBT community are those or those who do not identify with the sexuality are three times higher to suffer with depression, anxiety, or post-traumatic stress disorder. According to the Trevor Project, um, which is, you all may know, a tre the Trevor Project mm -hmm. is to support those in the LGBT community. Um, suicide is the second leading cause um, of death among individuals ages 10 through 24 in the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. And within this community, um, drugs and alcohol use um, is four times as higher as a way of coping than that with the heterosexual community. So there are a lot of issues regarding this. And I can tell you now as a mental health therapist, that a lot of it stems from people and families not really being accepting and telling individuals that they're not normal. They're afraid to, you know, talk about who they are. So they become suicidal because there is this fear that, hey, something is wrong with me because I'm like this. Um, there's yeah, a, a great fear with being thrown out of the house if I come out. And so there are a lot of mental issues associated within the community because of this lack of understanding. So why don't you yeah. all, I mean, whoever wants to start, why don't you talk to me about this? Alicia, why don't you start? Okay. Um, first of all, you're absolutely right. Uh, with all those statistics, I had done my research on those as well. Um, a lot of it, I believe, is debunking some of the myths that people have when it comes to the LGBTQ population. The first one being a lot of people say to me still this day, to this day, because I didn't say it in my introduction, but I too am part of the LGBTQ community. Um, I have been since I was a teenager. And so people used to always tell me, and again to this day, oh, it's just a phase he'll get over it, she'll get over it, or what have you. Well, we know it's, it's not just phase. There have been many um, research, many statistics done to, the de to debunk that. Like, it's not a choice. When you hear about all of the statistics of children taking their own lives at very young ages, like the statistic you gave from ages 10 to 20. There are other news reports out there of children younger than that taking their own life. Mm -hmm. And so it's happening. And so because 
this is occurring in such my, in such high numbers, we have to look at, well, what else is there? And so for me, it comes, it comes a part of the adults in these youth lives. When you see a change start to occur, um, a lot of times you might have a child who's outgoing and just start to isolate themselves. Um, if you if you're not talking to children, and see what's going on. That's where the disconnect begins to form because cyberbullying is real. Like that's that's a big thing that I didn't have to deal with when I was growing up in school. And so we we I grew up in the day and age of passing notes, <laughs> like and that's how things got around school. Now information is goes in a millisecond and so these children have to deal with cyberbullying and also there's not enough resources in the schools for children um we, we can go into resources a little bit later um but i absolutely agree the suicide is is definitely something that we need to talk about head on we are losing our youth an astronomical race and it's so gut-wrenching it's so gut-wrenching when i hear of a nine-year-old committing suicide because they i didn't they didn't even know that's the thing they didn't even know that they fit into the community because when you're heterosexual and you know you're attracted to the opposite sex there's no thinking about having to come out the closet you just say this is who I'm dating or this is who I like and it's accepted. But when you as a child, if you're not taught about the community, if you're not taught, um, I, I, I can't see it. I'm, say I'm not straight, gay, bisexual, lesbian, trans, queer. I'm a person. I would be say I'm a person. Um, it comes from we have to educate our youth. We have to educate our adults, <laughs> school counselors, teachers. That's how we start getting these suicide numbers to drop, by education, by knowledge, providing knowledge to these people who are holding our children lives in their hands. Okay. I like what you said, um, Alicia. And... Okay, Taryn already knows me. So, um, and most people who watch this knows me too. So I just wanna pose a question to you because I hear you saying that we have to educate people, especially in schools. But we have to remember that we also live in a Western society who looks at um, um, gay, lesbian as quote unquote, something is wrong with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Believe it or not, a lot of people are gonna see this interview and trust me, I'm a Christian woman, but my Christianity doesn't stop me from loving because that's, that's my biggest gift to the world is loving. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people are going to see this show and go, how dare you want to educate people on this? And all you're doing is turning our children and making our children gay. I want to say this before you address it. I want to say it as a professional who, um, who um, come in contact um, with a lot of this often. You can't make a child gay. <laughs> you no. Can't, you can't make a child gay. <laughs> Who made that a little bit louder for those in the back? <laughs> yeah, say it louder for the people in the back. Because they can. Listen, yeah. that's the thing that I've dealt with. I've, I've always tried to tell people, like, this is, um, it's not something that I chose. You know what I mean? It's not something that, um, like, who, who would choose to be shunned from their family? Who would choose to be ostracized and, and looked at and stared at, you know, by society and by all, uh, by all these, these different people? Who would choose to lose friends? Who would choose to lose family? You know, and I know for me, when I was between that age of, of probably eight till almost 30, I prayed to not be gay. Right. I really did. I prayed and I, I asked God to not, like, I didn't want to be gay because I didn't want this thing. I didn't want to be the the, the outcast, you know, in, in, in my eyes, especially when it came to my family, I was the only person that was like this. 
So it was just like, I don't want, I don't want to be the odd person. I don't want to be the, the one that's, that has to be different, you know? So I literally would pray and say, God, like, just make me like everybody else. Make me straight, make me not have these feelings or, you know, or make me like men. I really did pray for that, you know? Um, so it's not something that people, people, people really, really trip me out when they say, oh, you chose to be gay. Like, are you mm -hmm. serious? Right? Like, I can't, I can't speak for anybody else. I can only speak for me and my own experiences. And I know that personally, I did not choose it. I tried not to be. It. I did mm -hmm. everything that I could do to not be gay. Everything that, that my friends, my friends told me to, you know, uh, when I first started, when I, I lost my virginity and I told my, fr my, my best girlfriends um, who were straight, I told them that I, I don't like it. And they said, well, you just got to do it more. So yeah. I did it more <laughs> to, to, try to, to yeah. try to like it and nothing worked. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's definitely um, something that we do, we do need to talk about. Um, so I already know, I know that there's going to be some, some people who are going to say, oh, well, why are you doing this interview? You know, mm -hmm. you don't need to educate me. I, I love what you said about being, uh, being a Christian and also being a mental health professional, because I think that's where the lines get blurred a lot. Right. A lot. The lines get blurred a lot when people try to, um, when they say, oh, you're, you're trying to put the gay agenda. But what is it when you're, when, when you take religion and you try to beat me over the head with a Bible. Mm -hmm. Is that not the same? Is that not the, the agenda? Is that not an agenda? Right. Is that not um, um, you trying to force something on me that I just, I don't feel, you know what I mean? If, 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 if I know that God loves me, um, imagine the turmoil that a child goes through when they're told, well, God doesn't love you because you're gay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or there's something wrong with you. So this has to be prayed out of you. Yeah. This has to be, you know, there's this spirit that needs to be released from you because God doesn't love you like that. Mm. You know, so mm. I'm, I'm, I, I just want to say that, um, you know, I'm happy that you're doing this because this is, mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely needed for sure. It's needed. Absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned turmoil and that was like a, that's one of those words that, I use for many years for myself, <laughs> for myself, especially my early teens, like I'm in my mid thirties now, but my early teens, I felt like I was in emotional turmoil because um, I did have people in my family who are in the LGBTQ community, um, hence why I don't believe this choice, uh, but yet and still, I had family members who would not acknowledge it. And so we brought by a person of the same sex and say, oh, this is my girlfriend. Oh, no, you, baby, you just mean that's your friend. <laughs> okay. And my, and my family was very religious, um, Christianity as well. And so we started hearing about conversion therapy, um, people being, friends being sent out to conversion camps. Um, and I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, what do you mean you're going to, to a camp and try to make them straight through a camp through conversion right. therapy I didn't understand it and so I'm, I'm glad to hear today like a lot of states have been banning conversion therapy um, but the emotional turmoil is something that kids need we need to talk to our youth about it because if, if it's just putting a name to the emotions, because we know as children, children in general cannot connect the left and right brain like we as adults. It's something you have to learn how to articulate what you're feeling. But if there's no one there to talk to them about it, it leads children to go down a dark path. I totally agree. And Lorraine, I wanted to hit on something that you said. Mm -hmm. Because I often do come in contact with, whether it's in as a professional, um, acting and in the role of a mental health counselor, or even in personal, my personal life, where I just love, because I just love meeting people. And when a child um, sits down and talks to me and tells me that, you know, they want to kill themselves because um, they're cursed. 
And I go, what do you mean you're cursed? And then they start talking to me about it. And I'm like, okay, so who told you you were cursed? And most of the time it's family members. And mm -hmm. so you're cursed, something's wrong with you, you have a demon in you, um, we need to do something, you know? Um, and this is all across the board. And so it's, it's outside the African-American community. So I want, want people to understand that. It's, it, you know, it, this is straight across the board. You know, I, yeah. I've had individuals talk to me, not as a counselor, but just me meeting them that, you know, parents actually did a seance around them to try to get this demon out of them because they were gay. And that affected them. And so, of course, you know, suicide was the first thing for them. And they tried to commit suicide several times. And so as a mental health professional, um, I am concerned because my job is to ensure that people aren't committing suicide. My job is to make sure that people are empowered and mm -hmm. their self-esteem is built and they learn more self-awareness and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear this from small children, from teenage, teenagers, um, it concerns me. And, and this is outside of my whole professional field. I hear this because I love talking to young people. It concerns me. And so this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show. Um, and I, trust me, I do know. Y'all know I know. I'm going to get some Rydrick off of this. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> but it's okay because I'm a tough soul. But I, I, want, I guess I, what I want people to understand is there is a whole nother concept beyond this whole um, idea that, um, you know, if you're not straight, you're not normal. We're dealing with human beings. Right. We're dealing with mindsets. And so to mm -hmm. talk to a child a certain way, all you're doing is killing them mentally. You're killing their mm -hmm. souls. And so we yeah. have to be careful on how we, um, you know, approach our young people. We have to be careful how we approach our adults. I mean, really. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. because you don't want people walking around here feeling like, okay, um, I, I'm, something must be wrong with me. I need to die. Because, you know, I'm not average. I'm not the norm. How about you just love people? Yeah. Well, see, that's, the, exactly. that's the, the, the unfortunate part is that, you know, I mean, and again, I can only speak about my experiences, um, but I always thought that something was wrong with me. So suicide was always the first thought because if I'm trying, if I'm praying to change and nothing's happening, I don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so in my mind, it was every time, I mean, and I, I, if, if you probably, I'm nine times out of 10, if you talk to most LGBT adults, they probably have attempted suicide mm -hmm. multiple times. And I know for me, every single time it was, well, I can't change. I've tried to change and I can't change. So the next best thing is for me to check out. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I need. That's the only thing I can do is check out because there's nothing here for me there you know my family doesn't want me to be gay my you know um society doesn't want me to be gay everything i'm losing friends i'm losing family members so i might as well check out yeah mm -hmm. you know yeah. and that's what a lot of people go through one of the things that i know that i wish that we could bring back um is uh having mental health counselors in schools yeah definitely because one of the I can I can say without a shadow of a of doubt, if it wasn't for a woman named Ellen Fike, who was my um, she was my trust counselor in high school in Miami, um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. That, that I can say that with assurance. She if it wasn't for Miss Fike, I would not be here. Miss Fike helped me through high school. She helped me to cope, and she helped me to um, to at least start on the path of accepting myself because yeah. it had i had to it had to start there i had to accept myself first uh mm -hmm. in order to be able to face the world in order to be able to face my family in order to be able to face the backlash you know um so if it wasn't for her i wouldn't be here you know and she helped a lot of people 
I know for I know she I know for a fact because I still go to her page and I <laughs> randomly tell her, you know, Mrs. Fike, thank you so much for everything that you did. Like you really don't know how much you helped me. Um, so I really think that you know it's something that we need to 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 revisit because I know that there were trust counselors in schools, but I've I've heard that they've since been taken out, and that's crazy to me. Yeah. You know, that's that's just like taking out of, you know, with, with taking the arts out of school. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> there are some mental health counselors in school um, well, here in Florida. I have a son in junior high and then one in high school. The issue is that I have two counselors that have to um, oversee 900 plus students. Oh, my God. And so then that becomes a problem. Well, the caseload is a lot more than they can handle. Um, I spoke to a counselor a couple of weeks ago, and she's just like, I we just can't get to everybody. And so it's like, well, you know, you have these students who desperately need to see, and that mental health counselor, school counselor may be the only adult they might feel safe enough to go speak to. It may be the only trusting adult in their lives. And if they don't have the time <laughs> to see the student, yeah. then but what else is the student supposed to do? Um, mm -hmm. Where else can the student turn to for um, a safe space yeah. someone to talk to? Because everyone wants to, needs to feel a sense of belonging. Yeah. No matter if you are an infant until you are 99 years old, all as a human species, we all need to be connected. That's what human humanity is. We are connected to one another. And so yeah. we have these students, these youth, these adolescents who feel disconnected. We have to be there to to help them through these times because we mentioned earlier about uh, most adults in the LGBT community have attempted suicide. Um, me personally, I cannot say that I have attempted. I have had those thoughts. Um, I've had those thoughts. Um, I was married for 10 years to a man, and he outed me on Facebook. Wow. Mm -hmm. It had majority, we, we had a lot of mutual friends, <laughs> and he outed me on Facebook. And you meant in talking about losing friends, losing family, people sending me nasty emails that happen. And so it's, it's devastating even as an adult to some, for somebody to put something personal out there about you. Um, but we're better, I guess, better equipped sometimes. Um, we, we know how to reach for help. We know how to say we need help. A lot of our youth are still needing those those resources for from us can i just say um that's just not with you that's a lot of adults yeah. a lot of adults especially in communities of color african-american communities hispanic communities um, a lot of communities of color um, are still struggling and reaching out for help and um, alicia why i do agree that there are some mental health counselors in the school they have just recently started doing that because they see the need for it Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that we don't have enough mental health counselors uh, Agree. across the world. That's, that's just real. We don't have enough mental health counselors to, to help as, to give the help that is needed out there. Um, that's in school, that's outside of school, there's just not enough of us. And so um, that becomes a big issue. Um, a lot of people don't know about resources and community services um, organizations out there that they can go to for help. And so a lot of people can't afford it. And so they don't look for a mental health professional. And then again, there is still this stigma because there are so many stigmas that we live with. There mm -hmm. is still this stigma. Well, then let's not even mention that I'm gay, but if I go see a mental health counselor, then I have to be crazy. Something is wrong with me. <laughs> because there's a stigma out there that if I'm seeing a therapist, then I must be crazy. Whatever crazy is. Because I have yet to see crazy the same way I have yet to see normal. Because it, it differentiates you know, across the board. Yeah. So there's this large stigma out there. And um, that's what this show is all about, to try to close that gap to let people know that, look, it's not about being crazy. It's about needing somebody to sit down and talk to uh, unbiasedly, who's yeah. not judging. 
Yeah. Somebody yeah. to be there to support you and encourage you and to help build you. That's what it's about. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not about being crazy. Um, and so we have to start working on that and we have to be able to help people where they are because that becomes it. So I just want to move it uh, along because Love Rain, you have this fabulous organization that you've started. Talk to me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I started the the Closet Jacks, uh, which is um, it's it's entertainment based, um, but I, it basically started because what I noticed is that so I'm of course I'm I love the arts. So when it comes to um, music and poetry and all of that, I love it, and I wanted to be able to see more of that. And what I noticed is that there was a need for an organization or uh, some kind of venue that allowed that for LGBT artists. Mm -hmm. um, because where else can you go to hear a, tra a trans band? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, where can you go and you see a black gay man on stage singing a love song about another man and there's somebody in the audience uh, who reaches over and holds their husband's hand you know, who's also black, like they, they've never seen that. And these are true stories that have actually happened since I started doing the closet. Um, so I just wanted to be able to provide the, the, the space for LGBT artists to be able to perform, to be able to express themselves, um, and to be able to just have an opportunity to do that. Because outside of, if you really think about it, outside of the club, where people are throwing dollars at you, and then I'm not knocking that if that's what mm -hmm. people do, um, or their church, where else can they perform? Right. You know, where else do you see a trans man? Right. Never. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> where else do you see, you know, uh, uh, a lesbian woman singing gospel mm -hmm. at a venue? You mm -hmm. don't see it, you know? Mm -hmm. So to be able to, to have the resources, um, to provide that for people, that's what the closet is about. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, and that's what it is. That's that's literally what it is. We we provide the space and the opportunity for LGBTQ plus artists to perform, and we do the same for an audience. So, I love it. That is I wonderful. It. Yeah, because mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're giving a peop, um, people a way to cope. Can yeah. I just say that creativity mm -hmm. helps a lot of people to cope? And yeah. I just want to say something to you, Love Rain. And again, people gonna be mad at me, but you know I'm good. <laughs> is that you can go to church and you can hear a gay man on the organ, you can hear a lesbian woman singing, but you mm -hmm. won't know that because they can't say that. Exactly. Yeah. I know yeah. this because I too am a Christian artist and have sang quite a few places across America. And again, I don't know, maybe I just attract people. And when people come and talk to me about their issues, I've never been judgmental about that. And as an artist, I have seen people who can just blow a church out yep. mm -hmm. and nobody would know that they're um, gay and they're afraid, but nobody also would know that while they can sing you out, that they're also thinking about killing themselves because they're afraid that if they say that I'm gay, they're going to be thrown out of the church, they're going to be thrown out of their family, and so many mm -hmm. other things. So, Lorraine, I applaud you because you are giving people an outlet, mm -hmm. and it is so needed. Yeah. And as Alicia, you know, creativity is one of the best outlets to cope because Absolutely. it helps with depression and anxiety and all of these things. Mm -hmm. So I applaud you, Lorraine, for doing what you're doing, girl. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. You know, I tell people all the time, most of the, the things that I've done, uh, especially when it comes to, like, events and creating and curating dopeness. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it started from a selfish reason, you know, and then the selfish reason behind the closet was I was hanging out. I was, you know, with one of my best friends and we were looking for a place to just hang out. And we knew we didn't want to go to a straight club because you go to, if you're a lesbian, if you're a pretty lesbian woman, right. And, or pretty to society in society standards, <laughs> if you, uh, and you go out, men don't care. They don't care. They're going to try to talk to you and it's uncomfortable, you know? So we wanted to go somewhere we could just be comfortable and listen to music and have a good time. And there was nowhere that we could go here in Jacksonville. So 
both of us, we doped. And we were like, let's, she was like, you should create something. And I was like, you're right. And that's what I did, you know? So everything that I've done, it really does start from a selfish reason is because I'm looking for something and I can't find it. So if I can't find it, I'm not going to sit around and wait for somebody else to create it. I'm going to create it no matter what it takes. I'm going to create it. And yeah. it just so happens that along the way, um, all of these confirmations just come, you know, and people saying, thank you for this opportunity. I never would have had this opportunity. You know, thank you for, for doing this. Thank you. You know, I never would have had uh, an opportunity to, to, to sing like this in front of a room full of my, my own community. You know, so um, it definitely has started off as a selfish, you know, as so, trying to fulfill a selfish need. Um, but yeah, I'm just happy to be able to do it. <laughs> nice. I love it. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Uh -oh, I think she's frozen. Alicia, our new norm is cutting out on you, girl. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably come right back. Yeah, she'll come back. Okay. <laughs> So, Love Rain, um, you have another poem for us, dear. I do, I do. Yeah, my thing, my thing. <laughs> okay, so Alicia. she's back. Alicia, you good over there? My camera kept freezing. <laughs> I'm like freezing over here. Like the whole Zoom meeting just froze for like two minutes. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is our new norm, but it's okay. We're still good. <laughs> Yes. Oh. But now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Lorraine is going to do another poem for us. My yeah. favorite. Yes. <laughs> What's the favorite one? I'm excited. I've been I'm hearing about it. I'm going to myself. <laughs> yeah, be professional right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. My cheeks hurt. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Um, Life can bring us through many changes. It's all right. Just don't give up, know that it's gonna be all right. People come and they go, that's just the way that it goes. He said, I need you to inspire me. He said, I need you to take those words that you were given and reignite this fire within me because I've lost my way. See, I used to be an artist. I used to paint pain on the portraits of my past, but lately, Lately, these portraits pierce pain through a glass half empty, half full of my sorrows. And forgive me for my request, but can I borrow a portion of your strength? Sister, my soul is weak. Spirit depleted of its natural inhabitants and all, and I'm already prepared to fall because I've been to the bottom more times than I can remember. And in your smile, I can tell that life too ain't been easy for you, but I want to learn how to smile too. I want to learn how to get through when it seems that everything goes wrong and all you have is you. I said, brother. Don't let this smile fool you. Cause behind it, I've masked more amounts of pain than I can remember and used it to deface more shame than I care to admit to. I know all too well the hurt you speak of. I know what it feels like when it seems that love knows everybody's name but your own and you give so much of yourself that you lose all that you've ever known and all that remains is the skin on your bones. Brother, I've been there. I've been to those places most folks don't even know exist. So low to the point where even heaven feels like hell and waking up another day becomes nothing more than a constant reminder of failure. I know what it feels like to be so close to your dreams that you can taste it. To reach for the sky so much that you can trace the stars with your eyes closed, tiptoeing across the clouds for balance. I know what it feels like to be beaten down so much that you just want to give up. And no matter how hard you try, you just always seem to get stuck in the same places. Believe me, my smile makes me no better than you. I've just learned how to take my Nile of tears and turn them into rivers of opportunity. Taking every closed door as a chance to open up a new one. It don't matter how many times you fall. All that matters is that you get up. See, in the distance lies your book of dreams, but sometimes... Sometimes you got to tear those pages off at the seams and rewrite another. The further away they seem they are, the harder you got to fight to get there. Releasing all your cares to the wind, releasing all your friends to the wind, releasing all of your family to the wind. All you need is you. See, your truth and your validation will never come from the lips of another. And in this life fountain of youth, believe me, use me as an example. It ain't never too late to be what you might have been. 
So I'm gonna lend you my smile and hope that you will use it to paint away your pain again. Oh, girl, you give me every time. Girl, you give me every time. Oh, my God. So like, like when those mic drop. Like, like, you bust me up every time. <laughs> oh, my God. When those mic drop, just walk away. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Beautiful. Incredible. Beautiful. Yeah. That speaks to so mm. many. You don't even understand. That speaks to so many. You know what's funny? That that poem actually, um, it came from, I, I was at the gas station one day and I walked into the gas station, just going to go pay for my gas. And the, the gas, the attendant, he wanted to talk to me. He was like, oh, you know, uh, cause I have this, this microphone on my, um, my arm. So he's like, Oh, are you a singer? And I was like, no, I'm a poet. And he was like, Oh, so you do that inspiring stuff. And I was like, I guess, sure. <laughs> so he was like, <laughs> well, inspire me poet. And, uh, we talked and I ended up talking to the guy, I ended up leaving without getting gas, but I was talking to him and I sat in the car and I wrote that poem based yeah. off of the conversation that I had with him. So Beautiful. So you wrote that poem in one sitting, just in front yeah. of the gas station. Yeah. In one sitting. When the inspiration comes, <laughs> like it's, just, it's hard. Like that, the poem, the first poem I read, I wrote that in one sitting and took me probably about 30 minutes. So it just, it hit. Whenever it, when it hits, it hits. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's all got to it ain't me. It's not me. Not me at all. Oh, that's gifted. Yeah, that's <laughs> gifted, girl. I love it. Like Thank when you. I first heard you say that, when I went to your open mic, I'm like, I couldn't get enough of it on my phone because I was recording it. <laughs> and I'm just going to say it out there, and I hope I don't get in trouble because I told you this. A lot of times, believe it or not, I love it so much, and I listen to it over and over again mm -hmm. because, again, it speaks to my soul. And um, I have come in contact with people inside my profession and outside, and they're struggling. And I just say, let me let you listen to something. And I hit that button, and there you are. And it changes things within people. So I am grateful to you. Yeah, thank you. Don't stop doing what you're doing. I love it. Wow, thank you. Yeah. So tell people, Love Rain, how they can um, find out more about you. How can they get in contact with you? Um, so yeah, Love Reigns on Facebook, uh, which is L O V E space R E I G N S, um, Instagram, Twitter, everything else is at I am Love Reigns. So that's I A M L O V E R E I G N S. Um, I am Love Reigns dot com. Um, you can follow the Closet Jacks, which is it's just uh, the Closet Jacks uh, LGBTQ Speak Easy on Facebook. Uh, we haven't done anything since this whole uh, quarantine um, has been happening, but we're we're gonna we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna do something, <laughs> and uh, we're definitely gonna come back with a bang. Um, but yeah, that's how you can find me. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. I love it. I, I'll be there whenever you guys open back up because I had no idea. I've been in Jacksonville for a year and a half and I had no idea that you were doing all that you do, especially oh, the closet Jack. Oh, that's awesome. I, and you know, I've been yeah. trying to figure out ways to, to get more people involved and, you know, just get, I, I think a lot of people, I think a, a lot of the hesitation sometimes is that they don't know or they feel like, you know, especially if they're not out. Right. So and because I've encountered that as well with people who they want to they want to go somewhere, but they also want to know that if they go, they're safe. You know, if they go there, you know, people aren't going to be posting pictures of them and like and, and saying stuff like, oh, I knew you were gay and all of this stuff. So I've been trying to to get people to understand like, hey, this is a safe space, you know, like, yeah, people take pictures. But one of the the the, the precautionary measures that we take is letting people know like, hey, don't post any pictures of other people, you know, because yeah. people, some people are just not out yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that that happens a lot in the black community, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to men in the black community. Um, they're afraid. They're afraid to be seen at a gay spot, you know. Um, so one of the other things we've done is opened it up to say LGBTQ plus and allies, you know. So mm -hmm. allies are welcome. 
to come to the to the event you know and that that way we all just come there to have a good time nobody's concerned about you know what your label is if you're gay you're gay so what i don't yeah. care come have a good time come get a word if you need a word come listen to some music come dance and that's it yeah you know? mm. Love it. Love it. You're doing a great job, girl. Yeah. yeah, you know I love you, girl. You're doing a great job. I love it. <laughs> Miss Alicia, so I understand you have some um, some resources to share with the viewers. Yes. So there's national resources for LGBTQ youth to go look at. Um, we have it gets better which is some is a saying that i tell people all the time um but it gets better.org is a national resource trevor project you mentioned one of the statistics earlier from trevorproject.org stopbullying.org and here in florida we have um the gsa uh, gay straight alliances or gender and sexuality alliances and that um, two, two websites for that same organization is eqfl.org and gsanetwork.org um, is there are in the school counselors there's a association for school counselors to go to um, I just had it up uh fla slash uh, schoolcounselor.org and that website has an abundance of information that school counselors mental health counselors can utilize on how to start up support groups for their lgbtq students um it's just it's a wonderful wonderful website i definitely highly recommend that one so there's things out there there's um online uh, like youth what like tv shows uh radio shows the, the there's a wide variety a wider array of resources for kids to to go and to talk amongst their peers and um some of the state by state but the first few that i gave are actually national ones so no matter where people are, they can go and just and start the conversation and begin the healing process. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So ladies, our time is about up, but I'm going to ask you, like, what would you say to a young person, an adult who is struggling right now with who they are and talking to their family? What would you say to that young person who are having those negative thoughts because um, they're hearing, you know, something is wrong with you because you like the same sex or you're questioning your gender, um, your sexuality or, you know, whatever. What would you say to that young person, that adult um, who's struggling? Who's going first? <laughs> Alicia, come on, you can go there. I think I go first. Yeah. The adult woman is going to probably shut it down with her dope work. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay what i would say to a young person an adult anyone out there who's struggling uh, they're struggling with feeling like they're not normal there's something is wrong with them first off none of us are normal <laughs> so it's getting to understand that everyone on this earth have our own uniquenesses and I believe it is our uniqueness that makes us beautiful. Every person has something beautiful, wonderful, unique to give to the world. And if we tap into each other, we can really begin to see that there are, although we're unique, there are still more things that unite us than divide us. Um, we, it's imperative that we learn to love one another. 
love each other as God loves us. When I tell people when Jesus preached, he preached about love. We love each other as we love ourselves. When we begin to let go of our biases of what we think people should be, how they should fit in the box, and we truly begin to listen to one another, I believe that's what healing can take place. Um, so for people who are struggling with their identity, um, reach out and know that you're not alone. You are not alone in this fight. There are so many people across this world who are fighting for you, who are fighting for your rights, who are fighting for equity amongst our communities. There are laws being passed as we speak in other countries to, um, to allow same-sex marriages to occur. Um, and so in, in our country, although there's a lot of hate um, going on still, we know in everything there is a balance in everything. And so for anyone who's out the hey, you have another person who will be willing to show you that unconditional love. And so believe and trust that it does get better. I am a living, walking witness that it gets better. If you keep pushing, keep living, keep thriving, I believe that there will be people who come alongside of you to will help lift you up. And to remember that don't just be around people who tolerate you. Life is too short. Find those people who will celebrate you. At least the next time I'm going to give you a time frame, but you start preaching, girl. Okay. <laughs> I'm wrapping up. Go around people who celebrate you because those that matter don't care. And so we are here for you. There are people who love you. God bless. <laughs> love right what would you say to the young people um, I would just say you know what find something that makes you happy if you have something whatever it, whatever uh whatever it is that makes you happy find that thing and focus on that thing um and if you focus and hone in on that one thing whether it's writing poetry whether it's singing whether it's playing an instrument whatever it is find that thing find your happiness and focus on your happiness and everything else will fall into place. I love it. I love it. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for being Thank here. You. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to have you come back. But I love it. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> Thank so, you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so if you are a young person or an adult who is thinking about suicide, who is struggling and having suicidal ideations, please call the National Suicide Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. You can also call the Trevor Project at 1-866-488-7386. And remember, you are not alone. Thank you so much. Until I see you the next time, remember to continue to talk about mental health and how to make yours a priority.